To recap, we have talked about three types of grammar. Simple, quasi-simple, and LL1. We have also discussed how these grammars can be used to parse some input using top-down parsing algorithm. However, all these whiles we have been parsing input in the form of string, such as A, B, B, or A, B, B, B. And we also parse in the form of symbols, such as uh, balance parenthesis or imbalance parenthesis. Now, let's take a look at how we can use grammars to parse arithmetic expressions. So, what are arithmetic expressions? These are expressions such as a plus B or V minus V and they are widely used in programming languages. This is a grammar that can parse arithmetic expressions. If it looks familiar, this is because this is the grammar that is ambiguous and we saw it first in topic 4b. So if you look on the right hand side of this grammar 5, some of these rules begins with non-terminal after the derivation error. So this might possibly be an LL1 grammar. However, we can only know for sure once we have derived all the selection sets for the rules in grammar 5. So I'm going to go through the steps to find the selection sets very quickly. So let's start with step 1. Uh, find nullable rule and nullable non-terminal. So we do not have any nullable rule and we do not have any nullable non-terminal. Okay, step two is begins directly with relation. So we have expression BDW expression, BDW term, term BDW term, term BDW factor, factor BDW left parenthesis, and factor BDW var. And then these are the begins with relation. So this comes from BDW. These are the transitive. And these are the reflexive. Next, let's take a look at step 4. So in step 4, we need to find the first of all symbols. And we need to refer step 3 BW to derive this. So these are all the relation for first of all symbols. And remember, you need to derive it for all symbols. Uh, terminal and non-terminal. Okay, And then step 5 is the first of the right side of each rule. So because we do not have any nullable non-terminal, so we just are deriving the first of expression term factor left parenthesis and var. So these are all the first for all the rules. Moving on to step 12, so this is the results of step 12. The selection set for rule 1 is left parenthesis var, rule 2 left parenthesis var, rule 3 and rule 4 also left parenthesis var. Um, rule 5 is left parenthesis and rule 6 is var. So now, let's take a look at rule 1 and rule 2. They are both derived from the same non-terminal expression and their selection set overlap. Same goes for rule 3 and rule 4. They are derived from the same non-terminal term and their selection sets also overlap. Therefore, grammar 5 is not an LL1 grammar. So, if you notice, rule 1 and rule 3 both, they both have a property called left recursion. So, what is the property of left recursion? They are in this form. So, in this form, after the derivation arrow, the rule will meet the non-terminal again. So, if you look at rule 1, after the derivation arrow, Expression will meet expression. Same goes for rule 3. After the derivation error, term meets term. So this is left recursion property. Grammar that shows the property of left recursion cannot be used to parse input string. So we need to rewrite this grammar with an equivalent grammar. In order to rewrite the grammar, we need to look at 
this form. So we need to find this form inside our grammar. So in this form, A can be derived to A alpha, A can be derived to beta. So we can map, we can actually map this form into our rules inside our grammar. So rule 1 and rule 2. So I'm going to write it again here. So in rule 1, expression can be derived to expression plus term. And rule 2 is expression can be derived to term. So if we map this into our two rules, we will notice that our A is expression. Our alpha is plus term and our beta is term. So after we have mapped the form into our rules, what we need to do is introduce a new non-terminal R and we rewrite the rules by following this form and this formula. So it is important for you to memorize this formula. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a new R and this R is called E-list. You can introduce um, any non-terminal name, not necessarily it has to be E-list. So it can be Aiman, for example. So the A must be um, in the capital letter because this needs to be a non-terminal. Or it can be um, Amer. Okay, but in this particular example, I'm going to be using uh, the non-terminal e-list. So, and then what we need to do is refer or follow this formula. So, our A, just like we have identified previously, is expression. So, in my first rule, it's going to be expression can be derived to Okay, what is our beta? So we have, uh, we have identified our beta as term. So I'm going to continue by writing term and our R is a list. Okay, rule 2. R, a list, can be derived to alpha. So our alpha is plus term, a list. And in rule 3, our R is a list can be derived to epsilon. So use this formula to replace all the rules that shows the property of left regression. And if you still remember grammar 5, um, displace this property at rule 1 and 2 and rule 3 and 4. Okay, grammar 6 is grammar 5 that has been rewritten. And if you noticed, uh, it no longer shows the property of left recursion and two new non-terminals have been introduced because rule 1 and 2 and rule 3 and 4 shows property of left recursion previously. So the two new non-terminals are e-list and also t-list. So now we can check whether grammar 16 um, is an LL1 grammar or not by going through the 12 steps and again I'm going to go through very fast for this example so let's uh, for step 1 the nullable rules are rule 3 and rule 6 nullable non-terminals e-list and t-list so these are the BDW relation next um, the BW relations uh, with the from BDW, transitive and reflexive. Okay, and then these are the first of all symbols and these are the first of all right side of each rule and because we have nullable rule, we need to go to step 6. And so these are the FDB relations, these are the DEO relations, these are EO, so there is a lot of relations derived from EO. So these are step 9 uh, where it combines the results from the three previous steps FDB, EO and BW and these are relations derived for 
nullable non-terminals only. Okay. And then, here are the step 10. We extend FB relation for, with FBN marker. And then, this is step 11. We are finding the follow set for nullable non-terminals. And our nullable non-terminals are E list and T list. And finally, this is step 12. The selection set for all the rules. And now, our job is to check whether this grammar is LL1 or not. So going back to grammar 16, we have rules that are derived from the same non-terminal. Um, rule 2 and rule 3, rule 5 and rule 6, and rule 7 and rule 8. So now let's take a look at rule 2 and 3 first. So their selection sets do not overlap. So pass. Okay, next, for rule 5 and rule 6, their selection sets also do not overlap. Pass. For rule 7 and rule 8, their selection sets also do not overlap. Therefore, we can say that grammar 16 is an LL1 grammar and we can use this grammar to do stack parsing using top-down algorithm. So here are the rules and the selection set again. And since this is an LL1 grammar where we have disjointed selection set for the same non-terminals, we can construct an extended pushdown machine for this. And this is how it looks like. And we initialize our stack with starting non-terminal. Therefore, it should not be S. Since our starting non-terminal is expression, we initialize our stack with bottom marker and expression. And here are the recursive descent parser for grammar 16. And we need to create methods for all non-terminals. So this is the parse method that we have seen before. You do not need to memorize this method. Uh, what we need to do is how to construct the methods for all uh, non-terminals inside grammar 16. So uh, this is expression, e-list, and then um, we have um, the methods for term, t-list, and the factor. And if you notice, the way to construct the recursive descent parser for LL1 grammar is similar to quasi simple grammar and if the uh, rule is an alba rule just like this so rule 6 is an alba rule what we do is just we leave a semicolon inside of it 